Hello and welcome back to the world of psychology. Subliminal marketing, effects of music, sense, etc. and effects of subliminal messages. This episode is supposed to be a preview. In the past months, I've read hundreds of studies on the topic of subliminal advertising influencing consumer behavior without their awareness. And I was frequently surprised, I was frequently shocked by the results of some of the experiments. I was like, what the f***? This cannot really work. And I think there are a lot of things going on we should know about. Especially because, and this is the good news, because when we are aware of these effects, their impact on our behavior seems to be less strong. And some studies even suggest that there is no longer any influence. So as I said, this episode is just the preview I will give you an overview what is going to come in the next episodes. And therefore, for every research field we will cover, I will present to you one very influential study, one landmark study. And the landmark study for the research field of music influences on consumer behavior is the well-known study by Adrian North and colleagues published in 1999 in which music had an influence on wine selection. So imagine you are going to a supermarket and you plan to buy a wine because maybe you have friends coming to visit you over the weekend and you go to the wine section of the supermarket and in the background there is playing French music. It's obviously the typical French music you might know from the movies it's played on an accordion and as you are standing right in front of the wine display there are two different wines one German wine and one French wine both wines have the same price and they have the same sweetness they have the same taste so which wine will you choose and is your choice influenced by the background music well, according to the study results, the answer is yes. Because on days on which French background music was played, people more often decided for the French wine. But on days on which German background music was played, typical German beer keller music, people indeed more often decided for German wine. And what is especially interesting about the results is that after choosing one of the wines, the customers were interviewed. They were asked, well, do you think that the background music had any influence on your decision? And only six out of 44 said, yeah, it probably had an influence. So the majority of customers either was not aware of the music influence or they just didn't want to admit it. So this surely is one of the landmark studies in this research field and we will cover a lot more studies on this topic and we will not only speak about the effects of music on consumer behavior but we will also speak about effects of music on helping behavior and, and this will be fun as well. We will also take a look at a study in which the effect of music, especially the effect of love songs, on your chances to get a girl's phone number was observed. So we will discuss very interesting and also some very funny studies. Another very interesting research field 
concentrates on the effects of sense on consumer behavior. And one of the landmark studies in this research field was conducted by Alan Hirsch in 1995. Effects of ambient odors on slot machine usage in a Las Vegas casino. So in this study, they sprayed two different scents in different areas of a casino. And they also had a third area in which was no scent present, which was the control condition. So what they were interested in was whether the different odors had an effect on the amount gambled. Would people spend more money if they are influenced by different odors. And indeed, they found a huge effect of one of the odors in comparison to the second odor and the no odor condition. So this was one of the first and very well done studies in this research field. We will also cover studies on the effect of different odors in restaurants, But again, we will not only concentrate on consumer behavior, we will also take a look whether different scents can have different effects, for example, again, on helping behavior. Another source of influence that is often underestimated is the presence of others, the presence of other people. Maybe you know the situation, you go to the ice cream parlor with your friends and you don't know what you should take. Should you take a little or should you take a lot? Should you take vanilla, chocolate or should you try something new, something you've never tried before? And in these situations, when we are not sure what we should go for, we often look, well, what is the person in front of us doing? How much ice cream buys our best friend? And this human trait can also be used to influence our behavior. And this was shown in the very interesting study by McFerrin and colleagues published in 2010 with the title I'll have what she's having. Effects of social influence and body type on the food choices of others. In this study, the participants were told, well, we are conducting an experiment which is about movies. So your job will just be to watch a movie and later you will have to answer some questions about this movie. And to make it an authentic experience and maybe and because you might also get hungry, here are a lot of candies. So you can take as many candies as you want and you can eat those while you are watching the movie. But the participants were not alone because they were told, yeah, it's more effective if we conduct this study pairwise because otherwise it would take too much time. So the participants were introduced to another participant, which in fact was not a participant, but was a confederate of the experimenter. And she, it was a female student, was told to either take two candies or in another condition of the experiment, 30 candies. And there was another very interesting variation. In one condition, the confederate was thin and in another condition, the same confederate was thick. Now you might say, hey, this is impossible. One and the same person cannot be thin and thick. Well, she was given a, and now I quote from the study, a professionally constructed obesity prosthesis. And this suit was custom designed for the Confederate's body by an Academy Award winning costume studio. So you might have seen something like this in the movies already. And they observed two very interesting results. First of all, when the Confederate take only a small number of candies, only two candies, the 
participants also decided to take less candies. But when the Confederates took a lot of candies, the participants also took a lot more candies. The other interesting result was that when the Confederate was obese and took only two candies, the participants took more candies than in the condition where she was thin. Whereas when the confederate was obese and took a lot of candies, the participants decided to take less candies than in the condition in which she was thin. So it might be that when the confederate was obese and took a lot of candies, the participants said, no, I won't go down this road. I won't take so many candies. I'm not like this person. Whereas when she was obese and she took only a small number of candies, maybe the participants thought, well, she's probably on a diet. She's got nothing to do with me. I can take more candies. I'm not on a diet. So the presence of others can have an influence on us. And I think especially people who are on a diet who want to lose some weight should keep in mind that that their peer group can have a huge impact on their eating behavior. Now you might say, yeah, but has this anything to do with marketing? Could this be used for marketing? Well, imagine you are the owner of an ice cream parlor You could think about employing a confederate who always orders a lot of ice cream. <laughs> Maybe it has an impact on the other customers. <laughs>